In this video, Tesla Retail is once again outsmarting the big institutional investors on Wall Street. Some new data showing this very fact. It is stunning. Amazingly, Morgan Stanley share their response and reaction to Tesla's Investor Day 2023. And believe it or not, unlike many retail and most institutional investors, it seems like Morgan Stanley actually understand what they saw and haven't made the mistake of mistaking style for substance. This is going to be good. Oh, P.S. Last chance to get your submissions in for the latest exclusive Patreon Q&A. I'll be recording that very soon, so this is your last chance. You know where to find it. We're over on the Balls Deep Journal. Quote, Tesla stock is more popular than ever among individual investors. That would be you and I. Check this out. Net retail purchases of the shares total nearly $14 billion so far this year. <laughs> this is basically two months worth of buying from Tesla retail investors. $14 billion. Now, here's a fun question to ponder. How much of that is comprised of shares purchased by people watching this very YouTube channel? I don't know the answer, although I could probably extrapolate based on some Patreon polls I did a while ago. But this is some serious money. If this rate of buying was to be sustained throughout the year, and I'm not expecting it would be, but just to illustrate the point, this would be about $84 billion of buying at an annualized rate. And that's some serious fucking money. Individual investors can't get enough of Tesla stock. In recent weeks, they have scooped up shares of Elon Musk's electric vehicle maker at a frenzied pace, setting repeated records for one day purchases. Let me know in the comments below if you have purchased any Tesla stock this year. Already in 2023, they have spent a net of $13.6 billion on Tesla shares, approaching the record sum of nearly $17 billion for all last year. Hear that? <laughs> Two months into 2023, almost the same amount of buying activity of Tesla stock from retail investors as the entirety of 2022. And I understand why. Tesla stock still about half price from recent highs. Their interest in Tesla dwarfs that of any other security by far. Quote, the aggregate retail inflows into Tesla stock have never been higher, said the head of data at Vanda Research, who published this stuff, who added that buying among individual investors has likely, not definitely, but likely contributed to the 61% jump in the stock price this year. There may be something in this, but keep in mind, institutional investors have the big money. And guess what institutional investors have been doing since Q1 of 2023? Buying Tesla stock. After selling Tesla stock at the end of Q4 2022, the short-sighted quarterly nature of the investment world tends to cause some very strange buying and selling activity. I suspect many of the same institutional investors who are selling Tesla stock in Q4 2022 have been buying it this year as well. So how much of the retail buying has contributed to the move in Tesla price? I don't know. Probably not as much as this article might suggest. Let's continue. Tesla investors have a reputation for being loyal. They raced to buy the dip last year when the stock was cratering and continued piling in after it bottomed on January 3rd. As Wednesday's much anticipated investor day approach, buying set fresh records. Check this out. I mean, it is ridiculous, okay? We are looking at net purchases of Tesla by individual investors. This is the five day moving average on the left here. Five day moving average approaching $500 million. What the fuck? I'm gonna zoom out a little bit for context, but check this out. The absolute surge in buying activity. Chart doesn't even fit on screen properly. Absolutely insane. From the beginning of 2020, less than $12 million, hovering around the one, two, three, five, $10 million range. Then a huge surge, August, 2020. Let me know in the comments below if you remember what happened in August, 2020. Then going back to reality, five, 10, three, one, 20 million. Chump change in the scheme of things. Another huge surge, peaking at almost $60 million, January 13th, 2021. Then bottoming out again. Note, by the way, there are very few times this five day moving average where it actually goes negative, meaning almost the entire time from the beginning of 2020 until today, retail investors have been net buyers, not sellers of Tesla stock. There are a few occasions where this was not the case. Investors dumping the stock May 6, 2020, dumping the stock in mid-February 2020, a little bit of a sell-off September 2020, another small sell-off August 4th, 2021. And then from there, up, 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 and really, really up unbelievable i mean seriously check this out august 5th 2022 a comparable amount of buying activity on the five day moving average to september 2020 and then out of nowhere as tesla stock fell off a cliff retail investors went berserk buying the fucking dip and that's putting it lightly i mean look at this visually summed up in a nutshell and as i record this the data going up to march 1st 2023 we're almost at peak net buying activity from retail investors tesla stock still by the way about half price from recent highs. So I understand this. It appears that retail investors seem to understand the opportunity a little bit more than institutional investors. And why do I say that? Well, if institutional investors understood the opportunity, they'd be buying so much that Tesla stock would probably have surged beyond $400 per share. This is seriously ridiculous though. The five day moving average still above $400 million. The five day moving average of individual investors net one day purchases hit roughly 460 million in the last week of February, according to Vanda. 
the average for the next most popular security, the S&P 500, was just under 150 million. By the way, just a quick aside, I never thought when I started this channel back in 2019 that Tesla stock would become this popular. I did expect it would become as valuable as it's become, but I did not expect this much retail activity in the stock. I mean, seriously, the S&P 500, the index of indexes, right? Get rich slowly, just buy the index, right? $150 million versus Tesla, $460 million. The average retail investor is buying three times as much Tesla stock as they are the S&P 500. A decision that I personally believe will age exceptionally well, but I'll tell you what, this flies in the face of a lot of conventional investing wisdom. Just buy the index. I think that buying indexes is a great strategy if you do want to get rich slowly. But uh, spoiler alert, you know Tesla's kind of an index fund in and of itself. And what I mean by that, there are so many startups within this company, so many different things, each enormous opportunities. But owning Tesla is like owning a well-diversified fund. Caveat, of course, if the entire company goes bust, well, there goes your money. But with Tesla, you get energy, automotive, artificial intelligence, software, I could keep going on, you guys have heard the spiel, I'm not gonna say it again. Individual investors poured more than half a billion dollars into Tesla shares on Wednesday, ahead of the investor day, which kicked off at 4 p.m. <laughs> According to the fake news, the event largely failed to live up to its hype. Some investors had hoped for a shiny new object, a new, less costly vehicle would be announced to no avail. That's right. Tesla only told us how they're going to produce it, you know, the stuff that matters, but no picture, therefore disappointment. Plus, the company said it might need to spend nearly $150 billion in the coming years to achieve its long-term goal of becoming the world's largest car maker by volume. The stock tumbled 5.9% Thursday following Investor Day, but recouped most of those losses Friday to close at $197.79. This is a common tale after Tesla events. Often, a lot of investors will buy the hype and then sell the news. It happens more often than not with Tesla events. Of course, every time the stock goes down, there's somebody looking for somebody to blame on Tesla's fault. They didn't explain this properly. It's all fault the stock's down. <laughs> Just between you and I, I think usually the reason the stock's down after one of these events is because there was a lot of selling news. Doesn't matter what happened at the event. People hoping the stock will go up in the lead up to the event, dump the shares, hoping to make a profit, rinse, recycle, repeat. Tesla shares are still down more than 50% from the November 2021 record of $409.97 per share. Durga Bobba, who works for the drug cartel, said he bought Tesla shares for the first time in December. Mr. Bobber, who splits his time between San Francisco and Philadelphia, had been interested in Tesla for a while and said he saw an attractive entry point late last year after researching its financials. Quote, I saw the stock go to a multi-year low and thought, if I'm ever going to do it, now's the time. Quote, I'm a marketing guy and the broad appeal was the number one reason I bought Tesla. People love it regardless of age and gender. Mr. Bobber is one of many recent buyers sitting on substantial gains. Quote, I bought it for about $110 a share and I'm very happy. I will probably never sell. Tesla shares currently trade at about 45 times the company's projected earnings over the next 12 months, far off their peak of more than 200 times earnings, according to FactSet. <laughs> I just can't believe this ever happened, bro. During the sell-off late last year, Tesla's multiple approached 19. I <laughs> Still can't believe this happened, bro. In comparison, the multiples for Government Motors and Ford and the S&P 500 are 6.8, 8.5, and 17.6, respectively. The Federal Reserve's campaign to destroy the US economy has changed the calculus for Tesla and other growth stocks last year. The stock came under further pressure as 2022 drew to a close when Tesla slashed car prices and investors grew more concerned that Mr. Musk was distracted with his newly acquired Twitter. That's right, these dipshits were looking for any reason to blame Elon. The stock's down, it's Elon's fault. The stock's up, it's not Elon's fault, but if the stock's down, it's Elon's fault. The shares ended the year down 65%, their worst annual decline so far. We're now looking at some comparisons with retail buying activity, the five-day moving average on Tesla stock, S&P 500, Triple Q, Apple, and Amazon. A picture's worth a thousand words. This chart's probably worth a million words. Speaks volumes, doesn't it? They have rebounded in 2023, along with some of the market's other most speculative investments, such as Shitcoin and Kathy Wood's ARK Innovation ETF. Recent trading in Tesla has stood out, even compared with the pandemic era frenzy of 2020 and 2021. The proportion of accounts at Webull trading Tesla climbed to 18% in February from about 4% six months ago. Trading in Tesla, which typically accounts for less than 10% of Webull's equity volume on a given day, reached roughly 35% of total volume on the three days this year. Holy shit, bro. That is actually insane. More than one third of all trading volume on Webull three days this year was Tesla stock. Let me know in the comments below how many of you guys bought Tesla stock on the Webull app. Tesla is one of the most popular plays in the options market as well. Many of the biggest long-standing bets on Tesla are lottery ticket trades, requiring statistically improbable moves to pay out. One such wager is for the stock to reach $825 by January 2024. 
Nine of the 10 most popular contracts involve expectations that the stock will rise. Plenty of other investors are moving against Tesla. The electric vehicle maker remains the most shorted stock in the US. Short interest in the stock, however, has dropped to $15 billion as of Wednesday from a peak of more than $51 billion in January 2021. What we're looking at here is annual net purchases of Tesla shares. Check it out, 2018. A spec, 0 0.05 billion. That's like 50 million bucks. 0 0.63 billion, $630 million in 2019. A staggering 4.05 billion in 2020, 2.94 billion in 2021, 16.81 billion in 2022, and uh, yeah, 2023, <laughs> we're just a couple of months into the year. $13.62 billion already. How do you think this ends? What do you think this is going to look like at the end of 2023 when the full year has been accounted for? I mean, seriously, we could be looking at 40, 50 plus billion dollars. Incredible. I wonder why all these retail investors keep buying Tesla stock. They mustn't have got the memo. It's kind of like they must see some opportunity that I'm unaware of. It's not like I've been buying with every spare cent since, well, before this chart even begins. Giga Austin, Tesla leading the race to the bottom on EV costs, stock rating overweight, price target $220 per share, and spoiler alert, by mid-year. Hold me accountable. Morgan Stanley will have increased their Tesla stock price target at least once, maybe twice, or more, quite considerably from this level. Tesla's audacious efforts on vertical integration are about to pay off. EVs are far too expensive today. Tesla gave a number of drivers for a 50% cost reduction for its next-gen platform. In a race to the bottom, we seriously question how the competition can keep up. Allow me to seriously answer your question. They can't, they won't, and they will not. Following Tesla's 2023 Investor Day, we offer our initial high-level thoughts and a summary from each of the topics discussed. Number one. There was no picture of the next generation vehicle. Tesla, disappointing! Your presentation skills are bad. Why did it make the presentation easier to understand, Tesla? I don't care about half price. Don't make me put the pieces of the puzzle together myself. I promise I am going to stop mocking and ridiculing everybody who seems to be more interested in the style than the substance of Tesla's presentations, but not yet. One. Master Plan 3 entails immense level of vertical integration. Too many processes and technologies to mention here. We suggest you take a tour of Giga Austin for yourself and ask the folks on site what Tesla makes for itself versus sourcing from vendors. The vertical integration enables Tesla to iterate far faster and with less waste than any other auto manufacturers. This matters. Singular focus on efficiency and scale. Obviously, the most important things to be focusing on and they're Tesla's priorities, imagine that. It's all about getting costs down, way down. <laughs> Oh, uh, shit, I just can't, oh uh, man, I'm trying, I just, I really want to be respectful, but bro, I just still can't. I'm trying so hard to understand how people don't get this. Costs way down, sales way up, because costs way down. But Tesla, I, I need to see a roadmap for all your next products, I don't understand, what does half price mean? The vertical integration effort only pays off if you manufacture at an extraordinarily high scale, e.g. 1 to 2 million units per model, and greater than 1 million units per factory. We're talking the biggest plants with the high volumes over a small number of product SKUs, Wall Street jargon, they just mean different models, and high output per factory size. The word petawatt has now entered the automotive lexicon. This is true and a fair point. We believe consumers will one day look back at the EVs from 2023 the way we look back at cellular phones from the 1980s. Tesla wants to be the largest manufacturer in the world by some margin. With that ambition, achieving cost leadership is deterministic. Three, competitors need to change or face potential obsolescence risk. Okay, let me just translate. Competitors need to change or they're fucked. We leave the investor day at Giga Austin, asking which of Tesla's competitors can keep up with the planned spending of upwards of $170 billion for the build out of their manufacturing base for EVs and stationary storage. We expect to see most, if not all, of today's legacy auto company executive teams study the materials presented today and to tour the Giga Austin plant as they have toured the Tesla Fremont facility in years past. Over time, we would expect the forthcoming innovations brought to market by Tesla become the industry standard ultimately used by all automakers. Not unlike how Henry Ford's moving assembly line, William Deming's quality movement, and the Toyota production system became auto industry norms. Suppliers on watch. In our opinion, the auto components industry has feasted on complexity. Hmm. Complexity appeals to blank people. Fill in the blank. Outsourcing and higher levels of content over many decades, Tesla is on a mission to further reduce part counts, mass, weight, and complexity while bringing more of the components in-house. Smaller and less complex wiring harnesses, fewer silicon carbide chips, and the elimination of rare earths in permanent magnet motors were a few of the examples provided during Investor Day. But Tesla, there was no picture of the next generation vehicle! Five. 
pushing the envelope on batteries. We witnessed dry electrode manufacturing on an automated line during the Austin factory tour. While execution risk remains and many details are unknown, Tesla's impact on the global battery industry may still be underestimated in our opinion. What we are still waiting to see is Tesla's application of the first principles of innovation on the raw material, mining and refining side of the equation. We also look to see when Tesla can onshore LFP manufacturing at scale in the United States while mitigating entanglement from third-party vendors in sensitive geographies. 6. A deep bench Key man risk has always ranked high on the list of investor concerns at Tesla. There were presentations from 20 different executives across all key operational disciplines. No teleprompters. By the way, um, just want to riff a little bit on the whole presentation thing. There's some very interesting commentary regarding Tesla's presentation at Investor. It was so boring, I thought, oh my god, bro! What matters is the substance of the presentation, not the style. And I personally would prefer Tesla to be doing shit that matters, rather than spending hours and hours rehearsing and fine-tuning and scripting their presentations. I would much rather Tesla be spending the time and the intellectual and mental energy improving their products, driving their costs down. Of course, that's just me. A guy who cares about things that matter and doesn't care about things that don't. Hence me not wearing a suit and tie when I talk about Tesla stock on YouTube. Because it doesn't f***ing matter. That's my opinion, of course. How could we possibly know if it matters or not? Good question, actually. How could we answer that? Maybe because people are still tuning in and listening. Even though I drop F-bombs and I'm not trying to project a certain persona because I think that's what people need to see. And the very personification of substance over style. I genuinely believe there are some people out there who are so foolish that they think style is substance. In other words, Tesla needs to be a little more like Trevor Milton to lure in the dumb motherfuckers who care all about style and not at all about substance like fraudulent claims. Tesla probably should have had more dancing and strippers and light shows and laser beams and drones at their Investor Day 2023 and less information about how to actually drive the cost of their vehicles down by 50%. I mean, seriously, dude. It's just amazing to me that some people care more about the style than the substance. It's unbelievable how daft some people are. Politics is a great example of this. Some of the worst human beings on earth are some of the most admired in the political sphere because many people out there in the general public are easily persuaded by style and oblivious to substance. No teleprompters, thank f And Elon Musk was actually featured fairly little in the overall set of presentations. Seven, the non-unveil of Model 2 disappointed some people. But it shouldn't have. Round of applause, Morgan Stanley. They're about to explain why doing so would have been insane. From our experience, auto companies don't typically unveil far cheaper and potential better engineered products so far in advance of SOP. We're talking about the lead time between announcement and actual first deliveries. Imagine you just placed an order for a $50,000 Model Y and Tesla tells you there will be a slightly smaller version for half the price with enhanced capabilities available soon. Exactly the same point that I made. From a commercial standpoint, maybe not the best strategy, a sustainable energy future. Musk opened the presentation of Master Plan Part 3 by laying out the global needs for a sustainable energy economy. Some key numbers, 240 terawatt hours of energy storage, 30 terawatt hours of renewable power, and a $10 trillion manufacturing investment. Tesla's bottom line, a sustainable global economy is one, doable, and two, potentially more reasonable to achieve than most think. Vehicle design. Tesla stressed its design philosophy. Build elegant vehicles around efficiency and cost reduction. This approach has been at the heart of Tesla's design strategy since inception. Planning the design of the vehicle together with the teams that build the factory and other parts of the manufacturing line helps Tesla design vehicles focused on creating appealing new vehicles that also reduce the labor intensity and cost of vehicles. Using this approach, Tesla aims to produce its next-gen vehicle with a 40% reduced manufacturing footprint and a 50% reduction in cost of goods sold versus the Model 3 and Y. Powertrain engineering. The powertrain presentation highlighted the continuous improvement of the Model 3 powertrain in the last five years. Tesla highlighted some key numbers from 2017 to 2022. 20% lighter drive unit, 25% less rare earth materials used, and a 75% reduction in powertrain factory size and a 65% reduction in cost. Additionally, Tesla's strategy of in-housing more engineering capabilities than traditional auto OEMs allows the company to make products better or reducing cost. Electronic architecture. Tesla began by highlighting the changes in electronics from the Model S to Model 3, sticking to the recurring theme of attempting to make components both cheaper and better. Some examples brought up in the presentation. The cost of the display in the Model 3 and Y is down 24% since 2017 and the weight is down by 12%, while at the same time improving the image quality and screen brightness. Moving from a 12 volt architecture to a 48 volt architecture for Cybertruck and future platforms, reducing the current need by a factor of 4, leading to a 16 times reduction in lost power. Charging infrastructure, software, and FSD. Software is pivotal in Tesla's quest to improve efficiencies, e.g. in manufacturing and design, and FSD aspirations. For autonomous vehicles, it highlighted three main pillars. One, architecture. 
AI machine learning and neural networks. Two, data. Ability to tap into millions of miles of fleet data, an ability no one else has. And three, compute. Utilizing eight cameras in the cars to create a single unified 3D image and processing 30 petabytes of video, comprising an important part of the master plan to a sustainable future through an increased vehicle utilization rate. E.g. robotaxis, you guys have heard the spiel, don't need to explain it again, right? Tesla addressed a common limiting factor to EV adoption by highlighting its charging infrastructure is the industry deployment cost leader with a 20 to 50% lower cost than the average. Further, its average supercharger time is down 40% over the last few years based on hardware and software improvements, adding to the long-term attractiveness of EVs. Optimus and AI. Tesla showed videos of a working version of the robot that was announced last AI day and was able to perform menial manual tasks, as originally intended. The company claimed it will be able to bring it to market at scale faster than anyone else, with all actuators being Tesla designed and very little available off the shelf. Elon Musk ended with a bold estimate that there will be more than one humanoid for every human on the planet. Exactly, meaning long term, over 8 billion humanoid robots, conservatively. And his view that Optimus could one day be worth more than all of Tesla. Let's ignore that too far into the future. Don't, why would you even think about this? And it's not like being more valuable than all Tesla is like worth thinking about. Supply chain. Given Tesla's level of vertical integration, Tesla manages every detail of its complex supply chain with up to six tiers of suppliers. Tesla stressed the importance of having dual sourcing for parts and simplifying the supply chain design, rendering the company better equipped to handle the supply chain issues than most in the industry. The level of in-housing was also instrumental to allowing Tesla to grow its deliveries. How can Tesla get to 20 million of annual production? Good question, I don't know. Uh, I, we'll have to wait until Tesla explains how they will do that by listing all the different models and the categories and all the demand analyses and the consumer analyses and the surveys to, because I don't know how they will do that. It's not like they figured out how to halve the costs of their vehicles or anything. A Tesla with FSD uses more semiconductors than an average ICE vehicle, four times the silicon content. Resisting the urge to make a joke about, uh, let's, someone will figure out what I was going to say. I'm not going to explain it. On Tesla's estimates, the wafer industry will grow to sufficiently support Tesla's chip need, estimating that Tesla will account for 5% of the global wafer capacity versus 0.5% today. By the way, this is a drop in the bucket, but just think about the insanity of this. Tesla, just a car company, requiring about 5% of the global wafer supply. Manufacturing. A common thread throughout the Investor Day stemmed around manufacturing, getting more out of less. Oh, geez, that sounds familiar, doesn't it? Hmm. Or simultaneously reducing costs and improving quality. Tesla's manufacturing footprint today. They used the Tesla stock ticker instead of the, that's interesting, isn't it? Tesla's manufacturing footprint today is evident of this, with four vehicle factories capable of producing around 2 million vehicles, with the fifth announced in Mexico. Additional emphasis was placed on cell manufacturing as well as the inputs, all of which feeds into Master Plan 3. With current build-out of lithium refinery underway and a cathode facility being commissioned in the next quarter, Tesla's manufacturing abilities are moving more and more upstream. Could that go into mining next? Spoiler alert, if they need to, yes. Cell production update. Going off the general manufacturing theme of more with less, the company is focusing on process simplification in tandem with an investment reduction and increase in scale. The Corpus Christi lithium refinery will be commissioned at the end of 2023 and will be a 50 gigawatt hour per year capacity plant with aspirations to ramp within 12 months. It will circumvent the need for acid roasting and will be designed to consume spodumene. The company mentioned it is working on a 60 gigawatt hour a year cathode facility with a 10 month build time that will be commissioned next quarter. Tesla Energy, the sleeping giant. Megapack has deployed 16 gigawatt hours across 16 countries with best in class energy density and lowest cost to install. Snyder emphasized a maniacal focus on all aspects of delivering stationary storage. It's not a clunky battery box that requires cables and conduits underground. It's an integrated machine with the brain of the operation built into the pack. Megapack can connect to any grid globally. It's the most energy dense solution on the market. At upwards of 300 megawatt hours per acre, Megapack is two times more energy dense versus a traditional power plant. Tesla Electric is a new offering for customers who have Tesla Energy products. Tesla will offer unlimited overnight home charging for $30 a month, reducing total cost of ownership, rolling out in the Texas market. Leveraging abundant wind energy in Texas, this offering incentivizes people to charge at home overnight directly from renewable power. Lathrop is scaling and there are new products on the horizon. With strong demand for the product, Tesla has its sights on one terawatt hour of production. Financials. While no formal targets were given regarding company financials, Tesla laid out the path it has been on and where it hopes to get to over the coming years, with a goal of taking 50% of cost out of its next gen vehicle compared to current volume products, while also improving the quality. Tesla aims to take costs out across multiple fronts, the vehicle, the battery, and the powertrain, 
plus manufacturing and manufacturing, tying together all the innovations on display over the course of the presentation. Listen carefully, ladies and gentlemen. Should Tesla be able to hit the cost targets laid out today? They will be able to. When coupled with its OPEX discipline, are you sitting down? We find it hard to see a way in which legacy automakers could compete with Tesla in terms of EV profitability. Translation, they're fucked. Rather impressively, it appears that Morgan Stanley, rather than getting caught up in the style, understood the substance of Tesla's Investor Day 2023 presentation. You may recall multiple times within their note to investors, Morgan Stanley, in essence, suggesting that legacy automotive manufacturers are completely and utterly Morgan Stanley also exercising some logic and reasoning that uh, if Tesla was to unveil the next-gen vehicle and show what it looks like, that goes everywhere over the media and next minute people who are thinking about buying a Model 3 or Model Y think, hmm, maybe I'll just wait for the half-price vehicle that's almost as good. As I speculated prior to Tesla's Invest today, I suspected, best case, they were going to unveil the design for a dedicated robo-taxi on the next-gen platform and fail to mention that there'd be a consumer variant, or at least not show it, so as to not cause many people who are thinking about or have already ordered a Tesla 3 or Y to delay that or put it off entirely to get the much cheaper version of a vehicle in a couple of years' time. So I have to give credit here, Morgan Stanley, they seem to understand what was presented and the implications, which is more than can be said for many investors, both retail and institutional. You know, I think I've just figured it out. I think the folks over at Morgan Stanley are looking after their health, so their brains are working and they've got enough energy to actually do the necessary thinking. If I didn't know any better, I might suggest they're all drinking Athletic Greens AG1 in the morning, as I'm doing. In fact, it's just dawned on me, ladies and gentlemen, I began promoting Athletic Greens AG1 at the beginning of this year, right here, out of absolutely nowhere. The moment I begin promoting Athletic Greens AG1, Tesla retail investors begin loading up on Tesla stock. Obviously, this is all the proof that I need to say with absolute certainty the reason that Tesla investors began buying like crazy at this point in time is because they were taking Athletic Greens AG1, feeling, thinking, and performing their best. 100% certain. There's no doubt. There's definitely no other possible explanation. Now, in all seriousness, I really generally am still struggling to understand the Wall Street, the institutional investor perspective. Now, I don't want to paint everybody with the same broad brushstroke because there's people that get it. There's institutions that get it. Morgan Stanley seem to get it. But I'm really just having a super hard time understanding why some people aren't understanding. I'm trying my best, but I'm really having a hard time breaking through. While many retail investors are complaining that Tesla doesn't have world-class PowerPoint presentation skills, because that really is important to achieving their mission. And while many who manage money for others and are judged on their short-term performance are mad because Tesla's presentation didn't pump up Tesla's stock price, which also definitely has a lot to do with Tesla achieving their mission. So bad Tesla, how dare you not pump your stock price? Should have hired Trevor Milton for this presentation. We see data like this, retail investors seeming to understand the opportunity buying like crazy, buying Tesla stock hand over fist at these levels. Yet the narrative from many of the very loud voices out there is, that's disappointing. Plus, I don't understand. How does half price mean they'll sell more vehicles? Please explain. I am doing my best to understand here and trying not to be too obnoxious here, but it's really tough. So given the fact that there's an extremely clear, absolutely undeniable connection between retail investors drinking Athletic Greens AG1 and then buying Tesla stock hand over fist, obviously, the more I promote Athletic Greens AG1, the more retail investors buy shares from institutions and from money managers who are actively trading around Tesla stock. The decision that over the long term is very unlikely to age well. So I think what I'm trying to say is if I continue to promote Athletic Greens AG1 and you guys and girls continue to take me up on the offer of one year free supply of vitamin D3 and K2 and begin your daily health habit, PS, 90 day money back guarantee, so there's nothing to lose and plenty to gain. If these trends continue, eventually retail investors will own 100% of Tesla and institutions zero. And then we won't even need to worry about these folks not understanding what they've seen and I'll no longer need to roast them because they don't have any skin in the game. For real though, I love Athletic Greens AG1. I've been taking it daily now for almost two years. I've never felt or performed better. It's a great way to fill in nutritional gaps with 75 high quality vitamins, minerals, and whole food source nutrients, plus digestive enzymes, prebiotics, probiotics, and adaptogens. I know some of you are getting sick of hearing me promote Athletic Greens AG1, but I'm absolutely not getting sick of all the testimonials day after day in the comments and the DMs from people who've been taking this for a few days, a few weeks, and have never felt better. Head to athleticgreens.com slash SMR or click the link in the pinned comment to start your daily health habit now. And let me know in a few weeks how you're feeling. And let me know in the comments below. You think Morgan Stanley are all taking Athletic Greens AG1? Is that why they're thinking clearly or is there some other explanation? <laughs> Seriously though, please, I'm begging you guys. Every time I mention this, some people get mad and butthurt. I'm doing this to help. I don't need the money. I mean, I'll take it. Don't get me wrong. 
But the reason I've started promoting this so aggressively is late last year, I began doing some goal setting. One of the biggest goals for the year I was trying to figure out how can I have a big positive impact on more people that's outside the realm I'm currently in trying to point out the opportunity in Tesla and so on. And it made me realize over the last few years in my own health journey to maximize my energy, my output, my productivity, and my overall well-being. I've got a lot of value to add here, but as the saying goes, you can lead a horse to water, can't make it drink. I've led you to the water, but it's now up to you. So what are you waiting for? No, really, what are you waiting for? 90 day money back guarantee. What's holding you back? Head to athleticgreens.com slash SMR or click the link in the pinned comment. Start your daily health habit today and let me know how you're feeling in a couple of weeks. And submissions are just about to close for the latest exclusive Patreon Q&A. So if you haven't got your question in now, this is the last opportunity. See you over on Patreon. Love ya.